Hello, my name is Edward Duffus and I lead on product strategy and sustainability at OpenCRVS. And today I'd like to take you through a short demonstration of how OpenCRVS works together with MOSIP and data is shared through the interoperability layer. The screen you can see in front of you is OpenCRVS. Uh, I have logged into OpenCRVS as a registrar. So if I click up here on the top right, you can see my name is Derek and I am a registrar. And this is the standard screen that you see as a registrar. On the left hand side, you see a number of work queues. Uh, the first is in progress or drafts, which I'm currently working on, which you can see here. Then there's some other work queues as well, um, which presents the work that I have to do today. So there may be applications which are ready for my review applications which I have sent for approval, um, and then other um, records which are now ready to print, uh, so I could print off the birth certificates. There's also performance management modules and team management as well. Uh, in this short demonstration, we're not going to look at these other areas. Uh, we're just going to look at the registration of a birth event uh, and sharing that information with MOSIP. So if I come back to my in-progress work queue, so you can see uh, any drafts that I'm currently working on. So I have pre-populated um, a birth declaration that you can see here. So this is the birth declaration for Jane Doe. Um, and I'm now going to update it. So what you can see here is the review screen. So um, this is, as you can see, the birth declaration for Jane Doe. Um, this is the fictitious Republic of Farajaland. This is the country that we do our demonstrations based upon. And within the review screen, prior to registering this birth, um, I can see all of the information on the left-hand side, which has been already populated. It could have been uh, uh, populated by a declaration that I have uh, done myself or it could be one of my colleagues and then I'm reviewing their work. So what you can see on the left hand side is the information which has been entered, all of the mandatory and optional fields and on the right hand side you can see supporting documentary evidence um, and on this occasion as you can see on the right it's the child's clinic card. So this is uh, mandatory um, in Farage land to collect as a form of notification um, of the birth event. And obviously my job as registrar is to check off the details have been entered properly in the birth declaration compared to the child's clinic card. So I scroll down so you can see uh, details of the child, uh, their name, sex, date of birth, etc. cetera. Um, and I go further down and I can see details of the mother. And again, on the right-hand side, I can see um, the, the mother's ID card. I just have an image in this case, but normally it would be a scan of the mother's ID card taken with a, uh, with a mobile device and attached to the birth declaration. So obviously on the left, I can see the mother's details, uh, national ID, name, date of birth, marital status, etc. Also statistical information like her occupation, level of education, etc. So this is the form which is used um, in the Farage land model for birth declaration. On this occasion, the father's details were not available. And so I scroll down to the bottom um, and because I've completed all of the mandatory fields, uh, it says declaration complete. And I can now, as a registrar, I can now register this birth. So you can see it processing. And shortly what we can see is the, uh, the birth declaration is now registered. So you can see declaration registered just two seconds ago. Um, and that is the, um, the birth of Jane Doe. And it now has a registration number. So this registration number is going to be important because this is the birth registration number, the BRN. Um, and as we share this information uh, about the birth, the biographical information about Jane Doe, um, we're going to match up the birth registration number from the civil registration system, OpenCRVS, with the unique identification number within MOSIP. 
let's just take a quick look at this. So I'm just going to, uh, this uh, birth record is now in my ready to print queue. So I've just now um, downloaded it. So let's just take a quick look at it. Um, it's got a tracking ID and a birth registration number. And just below you can see there's a history of all actions of this birth record. So you can see I originally created it and it was waiting for validation. Um, then the declaration was registered. And then the last action which I conducted was I downloaded the information. So every time that a, any user downloads personally identifiable information, the system keeps an audit of that. So it's always tracked. So we know that, that Derek uh, Bulaya has downloaded that information. So every single action on any record uh, within the system is, is tracked and audited and we have a history of that. Anyway, that's now ready to be uh, printed. I'm not gonna go through the, um, the, the print process. That's for another demonstration. Um, but let's take a look and see what's happened uh, on the MOSIP side. So if I refresh this list, you can see that this latest, let me just check the, the numbers for you. So this was the birth registration number ending with KYM0. Uh, and here you can see on this list, KYM0, uh, this is indeed, um, this is just a, a, a mock-up of the integration which is happening between OpenCRVS and MOSIP. Uh, so you can now see that the CRVS ID coming from OpenCRVS, the one ended KYMO, is now linked with the unique identification number within MOSIP, um, which ends 4107. So this is uh, how we're showing that uh, these two IDs are now linked and connected, um, hence proving the interoperability of OpenCRVS within uh, and MOSIP. So that concludes the demonstration, just a short demonstration um, of uh, some of the OpenCRVS functionality, and in particular showing how on registration, uh, OpenCRVS is sending uh, information related to the birth registration to MOSIP and generating that unique identifier.